بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson In this lesson I share ayat from the Quran and authentic sayings of our Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam because these are the two main sources of information. If you want to learn Islam, then you have to go back to Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. And if you do so, then you know that Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam will teach you how to be a good Muslim. It teaches us how to think, how to feel. It teaches us how to speak. It teaches us how to act, our behavior, what is halal, what is haram. It teaches us the lifestyle. Your lifestyle as a Muslim is from the plan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made ready for us. We have to have clear purpose. We have to have, uh, we have to make conscious uh, decisions. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know who you are. You have to know where you're going. You have to have clear goals in this life. You know the habits. You have to have um, healthy habits every day. If you do so, then inshallah, you will be the winner. You will be a successful person in this life and in the hereafter. So last week I was talking about the test the test, the trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tests us all. Allah tests individuals and he tests the nations. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that I was, I was talking about this hadith and then I was giving examples. I'm going to still talk about the same hadith and give examples. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Inna li kulli ummatin fitna. So every, individ every individual is tested in a different way. I am tested in a different way than you, than her, than everybody else. But as a nation, every nation has a test altogether. The nation together, they have a test different from one nation to another. And then he said, وَفِتْنَةُ أُمَّتِي And the test and the trial of my ummah is Al-mal, money. Money is the test, is the trial for this ummah, the ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. How? At the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and the Sahaba, their test was that they did not have enough money. They didn't have enough resources. They had a difficult time. They had hardship, not finding the basics even. On the other hand, after the death of the Prophet والسلام, money became available. Resources became available. We have a lot of inventions right now. We have too many things. We have devices. We have, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us live in a very, very um, good time where we have things to make our life easy. But at the same time, some people become focusing on these lively things and then they become materialistic. They become superficial and then they will be going in the wrong path. So the test of the ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is money. Sahaba and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam were poor. They didn't have the basics. We have more than the basics. Let's have examples of how the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam uh, lived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul will taste death. We will all die. But the taste of death is going to be different from one person to another. How is it going to be tasting? It can be easy, it can be sweet, it can be nice. Oh, it can be bitter, it can be bad, it can be harsh. How do I want to taste death? When I die, I want to have a good ending. I want the process to be easy. I want it to be sweet. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after the ayah, وَنَبَلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ups and downs in this life. Allah gives us things and then he takes them from us for a reason because he wants to see how we react. He wants to see how we act. He wants to see what are the words that we're going to say. He wants to see the tone in our voice. He wants to see the body language. He wants to see your thoughts, your emotions when the ups and downs happen. So you have to be always alert. You have to be always focusing. You have to be always knowing what is happening. I know I am up. I know I am down. I know I have. I know I don't have. I know things are going well. I know things are not going well. When they, when I am up, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I obey Allah. I don't lose my path. And when I am down as well, the same thing. I am alert. I know that I am down, but I'm not going to be down forever. I know things are going to get better. Inshallah, things will be easier. It's just a matter of now, and then things will get better, inshallah. So all these, the way we think, the way we look at things around us, make us who we are. This is how your faith will be up or down. This is how you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this dunya, things happen. But sometimes the misunderstanding, the misunderstanding of these, like this information makes us make the wrong decisions or even think wrongly. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ And the human being, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him, so this is some people, some people, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them, فَأَكْرَمَهُ honored him, وَنَعَمَهُ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him blessings, gave him health, gave him money, gave him reputation, gave him whatever he gave him, this person, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا Then he will say, oh, Allah honored me, so Allah loves me, Allah loves me, so he gave me money, Allah loves me, he made me clever, and I have PhD, uh, Allah loves me, I became famous, Allah loves me, I am successful in this and that. Some people think that the love of Allah is being rich, being famous or being successful or even being uh, handsome or pretty on the other hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests this person and took away from him these blessings so maybe they lose their job they lose their wealth they're not pretty anymore they are sick when they are not granted these blessings, then they will think, oh, Allah humiliated me. So if Allah humiliates someone, then he doesn't love them. This is how we human beings think. This is what we think the reality is, that if Allah gives me worldly things, then he honors me, then means he loves me. If he takes worldly things from me, it means he doesn't love me and, and he humiliated me. But that is not true. The truth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing every human being in a different way. Allah tests some people by giving them and he tests some people by taking away from them. Both are tested. This is not love. It has nothing to do about loving or honoring. It's about the test, literally. He wants to see how we react. When someone have, how are they going to react? When someone doesn't have, how are they going to react? And I will speak about the proper reaction after I give examples of taking away, like Sahaba. Sahaba were poor. The majority of Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet والسلام, and our Prophet والسلام, himself and his family, they were all poor. 
they didn't even have the basics. Remember when I said last week, they, the Prophet والسلام, never ate on a table or a tray, which means he never had more than one kind of uh, food. Um, the Prophet والسلام, as Anas radiyallahu anhu narrated that he, um, he never had um, soft bread. The Prophet والسلام, never saw grilled meat in his life. Subhanallah, that is, that is, it's just something that we see every day. But he never saw with his own eyes. That was his test. And there is in another hadith, and Nu'man bin Bashir radiyallahu anhu wa arda, he is a companion. He said, I saw the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam hungry, not finding a daqal to fill his stomach with. A daqal is dates, but not any dates. It is the bad quality dates. So he is saying that your Prophet was hungry, that he didn't even have bad quality dates to eat. Wow. But did that make him say, why is this happening to me? Did he sit down complaining and nagging? His family with him also, his wives and his daughters, his companions, they were all in this together. But they did not complain. They had a very strong belief. They had a very strong iman in their hearts. In another narration, Sahel bin Sa'd, I know it's loud, it's the gardener. I hope it's not very loud to you, it's loud to me. Anyway, Sahel bin Sa'd radiyallahu anhu wa ardah said, ma ra'a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an naqiyyam min hii nabta'athahu allahu ta'ala hatta qabadahu allahu ta'ala. He said, the Prophet والسلام, never saw soft bread from the time when he became a prophet at the age of 40 until he died at the age of 63. That is 23 years. 23 years our Prophet والسلام, never saw soft bread. He never had it. So... In the, in the old days, they used to make the bread at home and they used to use wheat. But subhanAllah, at that time, they did not have the, you know, the screen, the screen where you, they, they, they put the, like, say, for example, if you want to use the flour now, you put the flour in the screen or like sieve, you shake it and then soft, the soft parts of the flour will come down and the hard ones will stay up and then you use the soft one and you make whatever you want to make dough so they asked the sahabi when he said our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam never had or so he never saw actually the hadith says mara'a he never saw soft bread for 23 years in uh, of the prophethood time so a man asked him hal kana lakum fi ahdi rasulillahi manakhil did you have all you, like everyone, did you have the screen that we used to shake and 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 to um to make the flour like to to make it like the the, the soft uh, separate from the hard parts? Again, Sahel bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu started speaking about the Prophet. He wasn't saying we, he didn't say I, he said. ما رأى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم منخلا حتى قبضه الله تعالى. He said, our Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام never saw it the screen or the the sieve. He never saw it with his own eyes until he died. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Another man asked him, so how did you eat the barley then? كيف كنتم تأكلون الشعير غير منخول؟ how did you eat the barley? How did you use it to make dough and bread if you did not have sieve, if you didn't have that screen? He said, we used to grind it. We used to crush the barley and then blow on it. And then after blowing, whatever flies, flies, and what is still there, 
we put water with it, with it and we made the dough and we made the bread. The basic, subhanAllah, simple uh, way. That's how they made their bread. And now we have all these, the, 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 the grill, the oven, the stove, inside and outside. There is restaurants, you go to the bakery, you have hundreds of kinds of bread, different colors, different types. Some bread have things with it, like raisin or other stuff, subhanAllah. Like, see how blessed we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all these things. We have food, we have all these alternatives, all these veggies, all these fruits, but subhanAllah, Muslims are still complaining, thinking that it is not enough. And they say, oh, I don't have enough. Oh, my life is so simple. I, I, I need more. So this was the, the Prophet والسلام, and this was his life. And this is how the companions even lived. Let's see what the Sahaba said. We have Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas radiyallahu anhu wa ardah. This good companion and to just to know who he is. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas was the first companion who threw a, an arrow for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fighting for the sake of Allah. So he's a brave companion, fighting for the sake of Allah. And he said, لَقَدْ كُنَّا نَغْزُوا مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ مَا لَنَا طَعَامٌ إِلَّا وَرَقُ الْحُبْلَةِ وَهَذَا السَّمُرِ so he said, we used to go to the battles. We used to go to war with the Prophet والسلام, And when they go to a battle, they are traveling for days and nights. It's a long traveling. <coughs> he said, we used to go. And the only food that we had to eat, going to fight, not going for a vacation. They're going to fight. And he said, the only food we had was two types of greens. They are like leaves, two types of leaves called al-hubla and al-samur. Imagine it is like when you, when someone say, when someone say, I'm going to, um, I'm going to war and I have a, like, I have a, um, uh, maybe like spinach. I'm taking with me spinach to eat. And, and you need it for days and nights. And he said, sometimes they got dry because of the way it's a long way, days and nights. The leaves will become dry and we are still using them. SubhanAllah, that's their food. And some of the companions took with them dates and some water. That's what they had going to fight for the sake of Allah. Imagine now Muslims are going for vacations and they just go to all these types of restaurants and they eat all these types of food and they're still nagging and complaining. SubhanAllah. See the difference? So I want you to know that this is not a request to be poor. This is not a request that you have to be hungry. No, no. This is a request just to be thankful just to be thankful for what we have. We shouldn't be nagging and complaining. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we have before we lose it. And the second part is this is a request not to do it too much, not to overeat, not to overbuy, not to overindulge ourselves in this dunya. We shouldn't be focusing on dunya only. We have to have balance. We need to find balance so that we can find what they found. They found the sweetness of faith. They found the peace inside them. They found contentment. They found the pleasure of being satisfied. The strength deep inside them came with their patience. They became perseverant. Subhanallah. With all the hardship that they had, with all these difficulties, subhanAllah, their hearts were kind, their hearts were good. 
they were very nice. They were very kind and they had a lot of patience. They had clear purpose in life. They had clear values. They were honest. They were trustworthy, even though they were poor, but they did not lie. They did not accept bribery. They didn't cheat. They didn't use each other because of money. They did not blame each other. They, they did not judge each other. Now, some, sometimes now some people, because they don't have certain things, they start judging the rich people. Yeah, some people, they sit down just judging the rich people and gossiping about them and backbiting them and maybe slandering them, which is haram. It is haram. When we say something here, everything that I say here in this lesson, this is for me and for you. We're not allowed to judge anyone. If someone you know in your life who is rich, you have to say, Allahumma barik. May Allah bless them. May Allah give them more and more. We don't judge rich people. We love them. They are our brothers and sisters. We don't gossip about them. We don't say they do this, they do that. This is not our business. My business is that me doing the right thing. The focus is on me and you doing the right thing. If I have clear values, if I have a clear purpose in this life, then I need to learn that I need a strong will. I have to be, I should have a strong will in this life. The strong will is that I have to control my tongue. I have to control my habits. I have to control my heart. I have to control my emotions my thoughts. We don't allow our thoughts to go roaming everywhere. No, you bring your thoughts back and you say, it's not my business. If it is about other people, you say, it's not my business. Astaghfirullah. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim I am a Muslim. I have to be patient. I have to worship Allah. I have to be nice. I have to be kind. If I have enough, then I have to share. This is what we have to be doing. Not judging others, not putting them down. No, it is just about who we are. A lot of people, they just think that, uh, like, I'm doing the right thing. This is the right thing. But no, let's really be clear here. What is the right thing? The right thing is to find balance in this life. Balance is when I need something, I buy it. Okay. <laughs> so balance is I buy necessities and they have to be from a halal source so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah. Barakah will be when my money is halal source. When it is haram, then there will be no barakah. And then the person will feel that they are poor, that they will always feel unsatisfied, uncontented, because there is no barakah. No, I want barakah, then my money has to be halal source, and we have to buy what we need, not what we like. Not keep looking at online and just keep buying and keep hoarding and keep uh, piling things, and, and we don't even need them. So this is all maybe probably the reason for hoarding and, and piling and wanting more and more. It's because of the emotional status. When we are emotionally unstable, we feel weak. We feel weak. We become weak in front of the materialistic things because when sometimes you feel lonely, sometimes you feel like, embarrassed you feel ashamed you don't have enough confidence you don't have enough self-esteem so you're looking for a, a an answer you're looking for something to fix these things these things are deep inside you you fix them because they are emotions that you have to fix deep inside if you look outside for things from outside to fix the inside you're doing the wrong thing because Subhanallah, you think that it's it's the wrong information that if I buy this, I'm going to be happy. If I go to that place, I will be happy. If I own the house, not pay rent, then I will be happy. 
So we think that the emotions that we have deep inside is because of lack of things from outside. Oh, I feel lonely, so maybe I need to be um, famous for that loneliness to go away. No, some people are famous. They have followers, they have friends, they have millions of followers, but they are still feeling lonely inside. It doesn't fix emotions. So whatever you're doing, you have to understand why are you doing it. Do not waste your time. Do not waste your life. Do not waste your energy focusing on the wrong thing, going in the wrong path, and then you will become lost. And then you will be more and more lost in this dunya. And you think that you're doing the right thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا do you want me to tell you who are the losers? Who are the losers? They lost their path. They're going on the wrong path. They lost their way in this dunya. But they think that they are on the right path. They, they lost the way. They are on the right and on the wrong way. And they think they are on the right way. Unfortunately, they are doing the wrong things. And they think that they are doing the right things. This is so sad. They are wasting their time. They are wasting their effort. They're wasting their lives on the wrong things. And then when they wake up in the grave and realize the mistake that they did, unfortunately, it will be too late. I do not want to wait in my grave to realize that I was lost in my life. I was focusing on the wrong things. I was doing the wrong things. I was thinking wrong. I was feeling wrong. I was speaking wrong. I was acting, behaving wrong. I went to the wrong places. I earned my money wrong sources. I spent my money on the wrong things. I was searching for something in the wrong place. Subhanallah, that is a waste to Allah. It is so sad that a lot of Muslims are doing that. They're just wasting their life doing the wrong things. I don't want to do that. So what is the solution then? The, the solution is to know that it is all about the emotions. The emotions are deep inside me. Emotions are fixed from inside, not from outside. Of course, you have to search for a good company in this life. From outside, you have to search for what is halal. What I meant from outside mean like it's not in the materialistic things. So I should be specific by saying fixing the emotions is not by, by, by running after materialistic or superficial things. Fixing my emotions and my thoughts are by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by doing halal, keep away from haram. We have to do everything that we do according to Quran and Sunnah. If I obey Allah, then I will be happy in this life and in the hereafter. But if I do something wrong, then I'm not going to find that happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So if I am piling and hoarding more and more, but then I know that in the day of judgment, I'm going to stand up in front of Allah and he will ask me about all these things that I'm hoarding and collecting and saving. What's the point then? So in the day of judgment, I don't want to stand up for a long time. If you go to a supermarket and take few things, you will stand up in front of the cashier for a few minutes because finish, gone, quick. The more you buy and put in the trolley, the more things you buy, the longer you will stand up in front of the cashier, right? You're going to stand up longer. The same thing in the Day of Judgment. The more we buy, the more we hoard, the more we pile materialistic things the more we will stand up in front of Allah. Because we're not going to be only asked about why did you buy this? We're going to be asked, what's the source of money? Why did you spend it on this? Too many questions. You will be asked about your time. 
how did you spend your time? Uh, I spent it on my device, day and night on the device, looking at uh, apps for buying, just shopping online, or looking at other people's profiles, looking at what other people shared on their um, uh, social media. So comparing yourself to others. And then you want to buy what they bought. And then you want to look like her. And you want to buy what she bought. And then you want to do what she's doing. And then you're more and more drowning in misery. And you're becoming more and more lonely. And then you become empty. And that emptiness, if you don't realize the source of that emptiness and that loneliness, you will be drowning more and more in it. And then you will be suffocating. Some people can't sleep at night because they overthink. Some people can't eat properly because they overthink. Overthinking is not right. As a Muslim, I don't overthink. When we overthink, what are we thinking about? If you're thinking about people, you're doing something like you, you're, you're making a big, huge mistake by focusing on people. If you're focusing on whatever you're focusing on, it's a waste of time. Because reflection, making decisions, and setting goals takes few minutes only. Few minutes you will be thinking. Few minutes you will be reflecting. Few minutes you made the decisions. Done. No more thinking. Now it's time to do dua. Dua changes destiny. Dua makes life better. Allah will support you. Allah will help you. And you will have hasanat. Allah will reward you in this dunya and in akhirah. It is the comfort of the heart. It is the peace of mind. I will remember Allah day and night. And I will make dua day and night. We will pray the five prayers. We will share with others. We will be kind. We will be nice. We will behave well. That's what we are created for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yuridu al-ajilata ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u liman nurid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever wants this dunya, we will give it to him. If you want this dunya, you want to be pretty? You want to be famous? You want to buy things? You want money? You want shopping? You you want all these things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will give it to you. But remember, Allah is looking at your heart. Why do you want that? What is the reason? Why do you want to be pretty? Because you want people to love you? Why do you want to be rich? Because you want people to love you? Why do you want to be famous? Because you want people to love you? Why? Ask yourself, why do I want this? Because you care what people think? Because you feel sad when people judge you? What is it that you are thinking about? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at your heart. Why do you want dunya? He will give it to you. But, thumma, then, ja'alna lahu jahannama yaslaha madhmuma madhura. They will come in the day of judgment and they will enter Jahannam and they will be humiliated there. Is that what we want? We want to be famous, pretty, loved by people in this dunya to the point where we don't have values. I will do the haram things, but I just want to be loved by people. Are we willing to go to haram places because we do not want people to be upset with us? Are you willing to wear haram? Are you, wear, are you willing to buy things which are haram just because you want to be validated by people, because you want to be loved by people? Is that what you want? So the love of people is your purpose, not the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the love of malaika. You don't want to be famous in the skies. You do not want to be known by the angels. No, we are a believer. A believer knows what they want. The love of people will come when you respect them. That's all we have to do, not pleasing them. Pleasing people is obeying them. Pleasing people is not required. 
I respect people. We respect people. When someone orders me to do something haram, I will say, I don't do that. I am a Muslimah. I don't wear perfume when I go out. I don't wear tight. But how do people love me? You can make people love you if you smile to them. Maybe if you respect them, if you listen to them when they speak, do not interrupt them, don't yell at them, don't judge them, don't backbite them, don't gossip in front of them. Just be a trustworthy person, just be an honest person. Don't lie to them, don't cheat them, don't betray them. They will love you. You don't have to go to haram places. You don't have to do haram things to please people. Just be nice. Just be kind. Just be who you are. That's all people need. They need a smile. They don't need an angry person who judges them. Woman arad al akhirata. Whoever wants akhira, and I hope, inshallah, that we will be from them. Whoever wants akhira, wasa'a laha sa'yaha. And they make an effort. Yeah, I want akhira is not enough. The effort. I need to put an effort. I need to keep away from haram. I need to do the halal. I choose good company. I can say I don't do this. I'm not shy. I'm not embarrassed to say to people, I am a Muslim. I don't eat this. I don't go here. I don't do that. It's okay. We will say this to people. And we're not shy to say, I do this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me. And we believe. I do this knowing I believe in Allah. I believe in Akhirah. I believe that I'm going to stand up in the day of judgment in front of Allah. My belief that Allah will question me, that Allah will ask me about every decision that I made, will make me make these decisions consciously. Allah will thank you for the effort that you did. Allah will reward you for your efforts. That's what we want. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us. We want to be famous in the skies. We want to be known in the by the angels. I want to be in the day of judgment with my prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I want to be smiling in the day of judgment, not panicking. I want to be happy. I want to have a glowing face in the day of judgment. And I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait in the day of judgment at all. So I am. I have to be prepared for that. Yes, today, tomorrow, we are going to leave this dunya. Wherever you are, you will die. One day we will die. But I don't want to die, just die. I want the good ending. I want to see the angel of death talking to me about Allah is pleased from you. I want the angel of death to come to me with his helpers, with their faces glowing like the sun, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said. I want, I want to be happy the minute I leave this dunya. I want to be at peace. I want to leave this dunya not regretting even one decision in my life. I want to make sure that I am doing the right thing. So how do we do that? Knowledge. I have to know the knowledge. What is halal and what is haram? What is the righteousness? What is evil? To keep always doing the right things. This is what we do. This is how we make our decisions. So we don't want to be hungry, definitely. We don't want to be poor, absolutely. But we do not want to be indulged in this dunya. We are not slaves for money. We are not slaves for people. We are not slaves for shaitan. You might, in the day of judgment, you can come and blame shaitan. You can say, oh, shaitan made me do this. Shaitan made me go to this place. Shaitan made me backbite, but actually shaitan doesn't have any power over us. Shaitan doesn't have any authority. Shaitan only plays with your mind. He whispers. So if a human being comes to you and say to you, you look fat by wearing baggy clothing. If you wear tights, you will look beautiful. Are you going to listen to them? Are you going to believe them? It's up to you. 
you can say, oh, yeah, they are right. Oh, I don't want to look fat. Oh, this is not, I don't want to be. And then you can go and wear tight clothing. But in the day of judgment, who's going to be judged? Both. The one who said to you, this will be judged, but you will be judged as well. You cannot say, oh, yeah, Allah judge her because she convinced me. She said to me, I look fat with the baggy clothing. She said to me, my face is pale. I need some makeup. She said to me, why don't you wear some perfume to smell nice? She, are you going to blame her? You can't blame anyone. It's a decision that you have to make. You can hear people saying whatever they want. But I know what I want. I know what is halal, what is haram. I am here to please Allah. And your self-esteem and your confidence will make you believe what they say or not. It's about you. It's all about you in the in the end. Even shaitan, if you want to blame shaitan in the in, in, in the day of judgment, listen to what Allah says about shaitan. Allah says that shaitan will say to people who blame him and say, Ya Rab, judge shaitan. Shaitan will say to them, وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ I didn't have any power over you. I didn't have any authority over you. إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ I just whispered to you. I just played with your mind, with an idea, with a thought. فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي But you responded. You did what I said to you. I only said to you, Sleep. It's so comfy. Don't wake up for Salatul Fajr now. You still have time. Sleep and wake up later. Did I force you to stay asleep? No, I just gave you the idea. The bed is so comfy. Stay in bed. Don't wake up later. And you stayed in bed. I just gave you the idea and you listened and you obeyed. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي Don't blame me. وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Blame yourself. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ I, would, I can't save you. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي And I can't. And you can't save me. So I can't save you. You can't save me. Subhanallah. إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِي مِنْ قَبْلِ I disown you. I am innocent of what you're claiming. You obeyed me. You made me as a partner to Allah, you when you obeyed me, you associated me as a partner with Allah. You shouldn't do that. But you did that with your own will. I didn't force you to do that. الظالمين, the wrongdoers, the oppressors, you oppressed yourself when you did that. You oppress yourself when you listen to the wrong crowd. You oppress yourself when you go to social media and get affected by the wrong people. You oppress yourself when you have the wrong friends who give you the wrong advices. You oppress yourself when you listen to random people and you just go with the crowd blindly. We Muslims, we don't do that. We reflect. She said, I look fat with the baggy clothing. Do I care? Is that right? Is that wrong? I reflect for one minute and then you will say, oh no, I don't care. I'm not here to look pretty. I know I am pretty. <laughs> you have to believe in yourself. I don't want to be pretty in the eyes of people. You only have to be pretty in your own eyes. If you don't feel comfortable with how you look, no one cares, Habibti. Wallahi, no one cares. If you were the most, the prettiest woman on earth, there will be someone to come and criticize you. There was, there's always someone to criticize you. So if you just search for the uh, praise from others, then you're just on the wrong path. So what do we do then? We just go back again to the balance. Balance in your thoughts, balance in your emotions. You have to find peace within you. You have to find that contentment. You have to find that satisfaction. You have to be satisfied with how you look, who you are. Yes, you have to be healthy. You have to take care of your diet. You have to take care of your habits on daily basis. 
that's your responsibility. And don't forget your values. Stick to your values. Stick to your principles. We don't follow randomly. We have our values. We have our principles. We will never, uh, inshallah, abandon them. And this is all to take us to the last point where I want to speak about. Some people are tested by not having the basics. And some people are tested by having more than the basics. For a reason, for a test. Allah is testing them. How are they going to react? Are they going to complain? Are they going to be nagging? Are they going to be losing their faith? Are they going to lose their patience? Are they going to say unnecessary things? Are they going to doubt Allah? Are they going to say the wrong things? Or they're going to do the opposite, the right thing. And on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us more than the basics. Are we going to share? Are we going to help our brothers and sisters? Our brothers and sisters now in need, they don't find food, they don't find basics. Are we going to share with them? Not, I'll buy everything I need, and then when I have extra, I'll give. That's not sharing. Sharing is I will share what, with what I have, even if it is not enough. The food I eat, I'm going to share with them. I'm going to put some of the money I have for shopping. If I'm going to buy something, it is not necessary. I, I can wait. It's okay. We can wait. We don't need to buy new clothing right now. We don't need new shoes, new bags. We don't need new furniture. Wait. Wait until this conflict is finished. Let's share right now. This is the time of sharing. We have to give our brothers and sisters. This is not nafila. This is not an extra good deed. It's a wajib. It's a must. It's a must. We have to give our brothers and sisters as much as we can right now. We have to give them money. We have to make dua for them. We have to pray for them. We have to support them. The least, the least, the least we can do is to boycott all these companies that help the enemy a lot of people are saying that is not necessary that is not uh, that that's not the right thing no it is the right thing we should not help the companies that pay to the enemy for their um, weapon or even their resources we shouldn't help them at all it's a must boycotting companies that help the enemy is a must right now and Allah is the witness when I stand up in front of Allah in the day of judgment, I will say, Ya Rabb, my Lord, my Master, my King, Ya Allah, I said, I said in every lesson, boycotting these companies is a must. Sharing with our brothers and sisters and giving them right now is a must. This is how we help them. Not only by words, not by posting things. Yes, we post, yes. We speak the truth and we give and we boycott. This is a must right now. If we don't do that, then we are not doing what the Prophet ﷺ said. In the authentic hadith, our Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Muslimu akhul Muslim. The Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. لا يظلمه, does not oppress him. ولا يسلمه, he doesn't give him up to the enemy to poverty to hardship if you if you ignore your brother or your sister who is in need that's the meaning we don't ignore those who are in need we don't ignore their needs we don't ignore to make dua for them and support them and give them money and and and, and be there for them so what i can do is boycotting and by sharing and giving them sadaq. وَمَنْ كَانَ وَلَا يَخْذُلُهُ He does not abandon him. If we abandon our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Syria, everywhere, in Somalia, all the brothers and sisters, if we abandon them when they need us, that is not Islam. وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي حَاجَةِ Whoever is there, 
for the need of his brother. Allah will be there for them in their need. وَمَنْ فَرَّجَ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ فَرَّجَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ If you relieve a Muslim in this dunya, Allah will relieve for you a hardship in the day of judgment. We need that relief. We need that uh, help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more we support and help our brothers and sisters, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us and support us. And if you are weak in front of boycotting, oh, how can I leave this company? How can I stop eating from McDonald's, Pepsi, uh, Coca-Cola? How can I leave Nike? How can I leave all these companies, the chips and the chocolate and the clothing and the, and the cream and the cosmetics and everything? How can I leave it? It's very hard. It's very hard. Remember, remember the Prophet والسلام, said, Man taraka shay'an lillah. Whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah will give you instead of it. Allah will give it up for you. Allah will reward you. Allah will reward you first. He will give you contentment and peace in your mind and in your heart. Allah will reward you in this dunya and he will reward you in akhirah as well, inshallah. One day we will leave, my sisters. We are leaving today, tomorrow. We are leaving, wallahi. No one, no one is going to run away from death. The Prophet, Ali, not the Prophet, it's a hadith, um, it's an ayah, it's a verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ If you run away from death, Death will come to you. Death will come to us today, tomorrow, we're leaving. We're leaving whatever we eat, whatever we buy, whatever we do in this dunya, it, we're going to leave it in this life. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ We will go back to Allah. Allah knows al-ghayb, the unseen, and al-shahada, the present. Allah knows what you're doing now. Allah knows your intention. Allah knows your weakness. Allah knows what you want. Allah knows what you're planning for. Allah knows your goals. Allah knows your, your habits. We need to change our habits. We need to change our goals. We need to change our lifestyle. We need to choose halal, keep away from haram. We're not asking for luxury. We're just going for basics in this dunya because the simple life is simple judgment, inshallah. The simple life means simple subhanallah like the things that you're gonna carry the burden the more you buy the more you hoard the more you have to carry in the day of judgment but the less is less burden in the day of judgment less timing to stand up in the day of judgment we are going to stand up in front of allah and he will ask us about the time we spend he will ask you about your effort. He will ask you about your emotions, your thoughts, your words, your behavior. He will ask you about your money. He will ask you about your relationships. He will ask you about your job. He will ask you about your husband, about your kids, about everybody. We want to stand up in front of Allah and say, we did the right thing, Ya Allah. I chose halal, kept away from haram. I didn't argue. I didn't. I wasn't a controlling mother. I wasn't always stressed and nagging, and and I wasn't always angry. I was a good listener. I listened to my children. I listened to my husband. I listened to people. I disagreed in a nice way. I didn't argue with anyone. Ya Allah, I disagreed, and I said I disagree with you, and that's it. This is what we do. We have to choose Quran and Sunnah. It is our lifestyle. It is the way we live. And it will be the way we die. It will be our way to the highest level of Jannah, inshallah. It is going to be what we want, bi'idnihi ta'ala, and Allah will reward us for that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he gathered us here today, 
to gather us in the day of judgment with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, with glowing faces, happy, smiling, and waiting for a short time, and then passing the bridge over Jahannam, going with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, to the highest level of Jannah. And when we go there, we will be dipped in a river. And then when we leave that river, we will forget all the hard memories. No pain will be remembered. You're not going to have any anxiety. You will not have any depression. You're not going to have any fear. You're not going to be worried about anything. You're not going to be sad for anything. You're not going to remember any bad things that happened to you. You will forget how does it feel to be sick. You will forget the pain, the physical pain. You will forget the emotional pain. You will forget the, the mental pain. You're going to forget every hardship that you went through in this life. And then you're going to go and live in Jannah forever. Salamun alaykum tibtum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the angels will greet us at the gate of the Jannah. When they open the gates of Jannah and they will say, Salamun alaykum, you chose goodness. Fadukhuluha khalideen, enter it forever. And the other groups of angels will say, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you. You were patient. We choose to be patient. We choose to be strong, strong-willed. We choose to make the choices consciously. We know what we're doing. We know where we are going. We choose to be always, inshallah, strong inside and outside. We choose values, principles, goals, and purpose, and it's all clear to us. We are on the straight path, inshallah. And we choose to be patient, resilient, we cope, and we know when we are up, we know when we are down. We are the thankful ones. We are the positive ones. We are the good ones. We are the kind ones. We are the respectful ones. That's who we are, my beautiful sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that strength deep inside in our hearts. And to keep the love of dunya out of our hearts, to keep the seeking, the validation of uh, from people outside our hearts, inshallah, we want Allah to love us. We want to be famous in the skies. May Allah accept from all of us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا my beautiful sisters والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته